a jaw-dropping natural show. That's Northern Lights, and if you are traveling to Iceland, this is something that should be definitely on top of your list of things to experience. Hello guys, my name is Jan, I've been photographing Northern Lights in Iceland for maybe past 5 years and in this video I'd like to share with you all my knowledge and everything that I think that you should know and just things in general to uh, help you higher the chances of seeing Northern Lights in Iceland. So let's just start with the most important thing and that's the time of the year. You can only see Northern Lights if it's dark outside. Which means it's not possible to see them during the summer months because the sun doesn't really set and it is the period of a midnight sun. For that reason the months that you'll want to avoid if you want to experience northern lights are from mid-April until end of August. So in my opinion the best month to come and experience northern lights is in September. It isn't usually as cold as during the winter and so you won't be freezing outside waiting for northern lights to show up. And the other thing is that they might seem a little bit brighter. The reason I say that that there is usually no snow in September and that means no light reflection from the snow in case there is a strong moonlight or you are in the area with a lot of light pollution. So it is always a good idea to keep an eye on the forecast and there are so many apps and websites that you can play with and download and all that but in my opinion they are just way too complicated and you don't really need any of those. Because this is Iceland and weather is always changing, you will be always checking Icelandic weather forecasting site weather.is. And once you're there you can also check the aurora forecast that you can find there. All you need is to change it to English, click on weather and aurora forecast. Here you can see the numbers which indicate how strong are the northern lights expected to be and generally if it's on number 3 or higher, there is a good likelihood you will see a good show. But from my experience it's worth giving it a shot even if the forecast is on 2, but I don't really remember seeing northern lights if the forecast was on 1. Also the high number doesn't necessarily mean that you will see northern lights for sure and there is another factor that you need to consider and that's the cloud cover. And the forecast for that you can see right here on the same page. The green indicates the clouds and white is clear skies. So the golden rule is that you will always want to get as far as you can from any light pollution. It's basically the same thing like with the stars. If you are in the city and you are looking up to the sky, you don't really see that many of them. And the same thing applies for northern lights. The good thing about Iceland though is that you only need to drive for like 5 minutes to get behind the town or maybe just take a short walk. A different story is when northern lights are so strong, you can even see them dancing above the city center of Reykjavik, which is the largest light polluted area in Iceland. So there is one thing that in my opinion isn't worth your money and it is something that I would sometimes even call a tourist trap and that's so called Northern Lights tours. I just don't really like the idea of being charged for something that's such an easy DIY trip and something that you can definitely do on your own. So just to be completely clear I don't have any personal experience with this but I heard so many stories of people having to waste their time just sitting around in the tourist operator office waiting for the weather to clear up or just being driven to the parking lot by the road behind the city. So I'm definitely not saying that all of them are like that, but what I would do is to just choose a smaller operator, something like a private guided tour or maybe a tour with a photographer who can also take you to a, a cool location and just uh, teach you how to shoot northern lights. And generally speaking, either do it this way or do it on your own, but I would definitely stay away from a, a big bus companies that provide trips like that. Alright, let's just move on to some of my personal tips and the first one is to be ready before it gets dark. What I noticed is that almost every time there is supposed to be a stronger northern lights show, you can even notice them in the late blue hour. It's just a barely noticeable green stain in the sky, but darker it gets, the more you can see them and before you realize they start to move all over the sky. But everything usually happens very very fast and also in my opinion uh, the best show always comes at the beginning of the night. My next tip is to give it a chance even if it's cloudy outside. But of course you will want to follow up with the forecast and check if there is any chance of clearing at all. You don't need a completely clear skies to see northern lights and sometimes all you need is a little window. If you are photographing, the clouds could even work as a great additional element. 
The next thing is, and I already mentioned earlier in the video, the light pollution, but not always you can get away from it. And so let's say if you are in the city or just somewhere where there is a lot of light sources around you, what you can do is to uh, find a place to hide behind something. Let's say a, a little forest, some trees, a wall, maybe a car. The thought behind it is that uh, you just don't want a direct uh, light to be hitting your eye or let's say the, the camera sensor if you are photographing and if you are hidden behind something you can much better see what's happening uh, up in the sky and I know it sounds very simple but sometimes it can make a lot of difference. The last tip I'll give you is a very lazy way to see northern lights. What I'm talking about is if you are staying in a hotel, you can ask a receptionist to give you a call if there is a Norton Lights outside. And they don't always do that, but there are places that provide service like that. And it can be a good solution for somebody who don't want to be waiting around outside and be called and all that. But like I say, it kind of takes away from the experience and uh, I think the more you suffer, the more rewarding it is. As with many things in life. Anyway guys, I wish you great Aurora Hunt, it is definitely one of the best experiences that you can imagine and it is something that you just won't forget. And of course if you want to see more videos about Iceland, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.